Hey guys, Scott here, Pine Baron Craftsman. Champion, Pine Baron Craftsman champion. Check what I got here, man, check what I got. Sold a quad. Johnson, got the Johnson. I got a big 33 Johnson. Okay, here's the boat, boat update. Let me do a walkthrough here, okay. New transom. LVL, you guys know what that is? Load, versatile lumber. Um, load of various lifting. Here's the boat. Mounted the seats, swivel. Custom, dr drill the hole, custom. Let the water out, okay? Steel frame construction in an aluminum boat. Painted red, 17 coats. I'm gonna go over this. 4200 caulk. Transom bolted in. Okay, cable, cable steering. Now, let's get to the Johnson. So, guy over there in Southern Maine Posted this on Marketplace. It says it ran. It ran when it was last run. <laughs> At some point it ran from when it was built to right now. We got a broken tab. It's all right. Got connections, fuel line hookup, shift linkages. I guess this is where the shifter linkage goes to the front of the boat to put me into low and start and then gives me the throttle for fast. This is my shifter, which goes through here. It's gonna be a steering situation. All right, it's gonna be done with the pulleys. Does it not move? Why is it moving? I gotta figure out, maybe it's locked out for some reason. I don't know if it needs to be in a certain position to turn. I gotta look at that. Um, the propeller shaft spins in neutral. Propeller is not connected. Shear pin broken. Okay. It stops before it pulls out. I'm guessing I need to figure out how to get this off of here. And I've been told I need a new prop. Because once it spins, it's done, is what I was told. I would think, just by mechanical thought process, that you put a shear pin in here and a cotter pin, it should be good. But this guy's telling me, a buddy of mine, that there's an inner seal that once it breaks, it's gone. But that might be one that's pressed on. There is a keyway here. There's a keyway here that does not have anything in it. So maybe there's some more damage here than I know. I gotta do some research. That would be the next step. All right, so today's project is, I'll take this off. Take the lid. 1960s, 1960s, two cylinder deal. Okay, I had some mice in it. We got, cool green and we got like gumby puke green. So I don't know if this was painted this color from the factory, which why it should be the same color. If this was repainted because it overheated. So that's our first line of thought. Um, it's missing a starter. I need a starter here. It has a pull cord, which it does cycle over. I don't know what this is, but it cut me pretty good yesterday. I'm thinking this has something to do with the electrical stator. Maybe this spins and charges, okay? And then points, I'm thinking, are up here on the rotational. Spark, 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 spark. Sends it down here. Boom, we got fuel delivery and a fuel pump. Fuel pump, look at that, in and out. Yep. I guess it's a mechanical fuel pump. 
We got linkages. All right, so extract, extrapolate, extrude first spark plug, number top cylinder, number one. It's got a little frosted tip on it like M&M &M from the 90s, okay? I don't know what the frost thing is. It looks like powdered sugar. Um, we got number two, lower. Oily. Fuel. And smells like an old antique store. I'm not trying to bite off Vice Grip's thing, but he does have a good joke once in a while about what it smells like. But that smells like an antique store. Um, we're going to do a compression check. Okay. These are compression testers. They test PSI up to 300. Okay. Inside the end, there is a Schrader valve. Schrader valve that it will build pressure and hold pressure in the tube so the gauge will read whatever the PSI is inside the cylinder. So picture this is a balloon, the cylinder in here is a balloon and you're blowing the balloon up and this is telling you how much hot breath is in that cylinder. So when you're done, you try to check both cylinders and the way that you do that is you hook one of these compression testers up and you pull the cord and let the cylinder rotate, I should say, uh, extend and retract a couple times, and then the gauge will read higher PSI, and then we test the bottom one. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, maybe I could do it over here. I've never done like a, like a, on the refrigerator hold before. All right, too quick. Okay, take the top spark plug out. This does not have a swivel on it, so you have to spin it as you're in, threading it in. Don't cross thread it. They have adapters to fit different cylinder heads. This is a general use compression tester. So like this fit my Chevy truck, this fit my lawnmower, and this fits my Johnson. Okay, so I'm going to let this hang. This goes this way. And I'm going to hold the motor, and I'm going to just pull this a couple times, and it's going to hold the pressure at its highest PSI in the cylinder. And we are at 30... Maybe 40, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. So we're at 30, we're at 40. See, I just let the air out. Okay, that's 40. Let's make this a little tighter. Make sure we're not bleeding off anything. Let's try that again. Maybe I'll do that like three times this time. One. Two, three, four. So now we're reading, oh, I just touched it. <laughs> it was up closer to 60. It was closer to 60 that time with more revolutions. So let's say we were at 50 and let's go on that for now. Okay. And I'm doing this so that the other cylinder is blowing off that pressure. If you try to load up both cylinders with the compression tester, I don't know if it would be that easy to cycle the motor. I should have, oh, I should have sprayed some WD-40 down there. That was a mistake. Sometimes it's good to wet those rings inside that cylinder. It'll help make some compression. So let's just test it before and after. If the compression ring in, in the cylinder on the compression ring, if it's worn out, that's one of the things we can bleed out. But if it's dry, sometimes you can put a little bit of juice in there and uh, it'll make better compression, right? It won't bleed, bleed off. 
That's 60, 60, that's 50, that's 50 PSI, 50 PSI. So both cylinders are about the same. So I would like to throw a little bit of clean WD-40 down there because I should have did that before because I'm cycling this, it's dry, hasn't been running a long time. Just a little zip will do you. I don't even know if you should do this. I know I'm doing it, just juice it up. And take this off. Like, this is a two-stroke engine. It has to do with the amount of time the piston travels up and down. And it has to do with the mixture. This engine's burn a mixture of oil and gas. This does not have a oil adder. Some of them have an oil tank that will add oil as it runs so it doesn't dry it up. So let's see if we get a higher reading with that WD-40 in there. So far so good. If this head was cracked, at least at some of the gaskets and stuff, we would have a hard time getting any compression at all. I don't know if it's going to be lower. One, two, wow, it's moving a lot easier. Three, Wow, that, oh, that, yeah, so now we're at 60, same, so it's the same compression, at least that proves us 55, 60, but that cylinder wall might have been getting score, scored with some junk, so I'm going to take the air hose and I'm going to try to blow that out, that was my shoe, Um, yeah, I think that's fine for now. I'll keep you guys posted when I'm ready to start it. I don't think I'll be ready to start it today. I'm going to do a little research on this propeller and the starter. But so far we got compression and the shaft spins freely in neutral and first and second engages. Um, yeah, just real quick. Take this pressure tank. You don't gotta send a lot of air in there, just so it's probably probably clean, but to get that WD a little bit moved around out of there, let's see. Watch your eyes. Sound nice in there. Good. Good. Thanks for watching. Keep it keep me posted on what you're doing in your life. Let me know how your life is going. Cause my life is all right. All right, WD-40. Peace out, we're gonna go fishing. Hopefully before the season's over, I'd like to get this boat on the lake. 33 horse in an aluminum, basically a John boat with just me in it. Buck 85, like a gazelle, man. It's gonna be moving.